Writer Thomas Fuller once said, a good archer is known not by his arrows, but by his aim. Hello all, welcome back to yet another episode on SSP Crack Talks. I am Anuradha and in today's session, we are going to meet a brilliantly talented young woman who is not only an international athlete, a world champion, a World Cup medalist and an Asia Cup winner in archery, but also CDS OTA 2 2021 All India Rank Holder second position, who got recommended in her very first SSV attempt, the bullseye. She is none other than the sports celebrity, Miss Divya Dhyal. Hi Divya, how are you? Hello ma'am, I'm good, how are you? I'm fine as well. First of all, Divya, on behalf of SSB Crack Talks, I want to welcome you heartily here. Thank you for giving us such a precious time, uh, spending your time with us and sharing your experiences about the SSB attempt that you have gone for. Since you're also the serious uh, OTA2 2021 uh, AIR2 rank holder. So it's a pleasure having uh, you know you with us today. Uh, so the thing is that you got recommended uh, for the very first attempt in your SSB. So how are you feeling after getting recommended? Uh, I'm feeling really great. Uh, I had been preparing for this uh, for the past one year. So it was a very happy moment for me. So on the result day, when you, uh, you know, uh, gave information about that you got uh, selected to your friends and your family members, how did they react to your success? They were uh, very happy. Uh, I told my parents first and they were very happy. And then I didn't have to tell my friends. Somehow they just got to know. And then I started getting messages. They were, uh, I think they were in fact more happy than I was. Right. So uh, you are a sports celebrity. As we can see, you have won a lot of championships, including World Cup, as well as the, uh, you know, the Asia Cup as well for archery. So being a sports celebrity, why you chose defense over your sports career? Um, actually, before I got into sports, um, I've come from an army background. My father is in the army. So I was actually pretty close to the army environment. And right since my childhood, before even I got into archery, it was my dream uh, to go in the army and to wear a uniform. So that's how even though I got into sports and I've done well, but uh, my dream has always been to be in the army. Okay. So being an army brat, how you got help from your own family or your father, as you just now said, your father uh, is in the army. So how he helped you to achieve your dreams? Uh, definitely, there was a lot of support. Uh, my parents, uh, my family, my friends, all of them uh, were told me that, you know, you are... Uh, it's your dream and you're made for it. So you should go for it. And my father, he's himself gone through the SSB process. So he helped me out. He guided me. He told me what the attitude should be. So like that, uh, definitely, I think the support is the biggest thing. Okay. Who motivated or what motivated you to join defense from the very early childhood? Uh, I think it was the environment. My father was like... Uh, uh, this uh, role model figure for me and not just him there were so many officers around us all the time so that uh, right from uh, the, my childhood I had a dream that th that was my motivation just being around them and they were an inspiration for me okay so you are AIR2 rank holder in CDS OTA2 2021 so how did you prepare for this written exam of CDS uh, for the written exam, I had started preparing. Uh, I've been preparing for about a year before I gave my exam. And I initially, I started with, I got a book. Uh, I got to know the syllabus. But I think the most important thing is to analyze the previous year questions. Because the syllabus of the exam is very vast. So you can't just go about studying everything. So uh, eventually, I zeroed down. Uh, I will tell you subject-wise how I did it. So for science, I did my uh, ninth and 10th standard NCRT. Now I'm a commerce student. So I had to uh, do all that history, geography, everything again. So that's why I kept science limited to ninth and 10th. I didn't go to 11th, 12th NCRTs because that's too much. And uh, normally people say that 
uh, you should study from 6 to 12 but that's not important um, you can simply do 9 10 10 crt if you're not a science student and that's actually it's more than enough and uh, for my um, geography i did my 11th standard uh, ncrt the two books um, physical geography and indian geography and i also did world mapping so world mapping i did from uh, youtube and even if you just put a world map and you analyze it it's more than enough so that's how i did my geography for history i did my 12th standard ncrt ancient medieval and modern and uh, for political science, Lakshmikant is a uh, third thing. And uh, economics, I did micro and macroeconomics. So that's how I covered uh, my subjects. And uh, revision is key. So revising again and again is what helped me. Uh, so that's how I went about my preparation. Okay, so I think the audience who's watching us now uh, is getting a lot of information from you about which books they can refer to. Yeah. Uh, so my next question is, you are, as I said, you are AIR2. So what special preparation you did to achieve that rank? Well, you know, I think it's about uh, time management because like I said, the syllabus is very vast. So you can't uh, do everything. Uh, for just uh, picking the books that I did and then revising it again and again is very important. And uh, surprisingly, actually, most people don't believe it, but I didn't read newspaper for my current affairs, for my series, uh, for the written exam at least. For SSB, I did, but for my written exam, I didn't read the newspaper because it wasted a lot of time. I would just uh, look at uh, these daily current affairs videos uh, that SSB Crack puts up, and that really helped me. So I think that is the key uh, to select smart uh, studies and revision is the key. So did you know that you will be a rank holder? Oh, no. <laughs> I That was very unexpected, actually. I, I was just hoping that I'll come in top 16 because if you think about it, the amount of people who uh, apply for it, uh, as compared to that, um, the vacancies are actually quite less. So I felt like I should just get into the merit somehow. So it was definitely very unexpected, but I'm very happy. So whom do you want to give credit to for this AI or two rank? <laughs> I want to give credit to everybody who helped me, my parents, uh, and uh, of course, all the you know uh, channels that I had through which I got to prepare. And of course, uh, my friends, they helped me out. I have some of my friends who are preparing for civil services. So they really help, help me, push me and tell me that, yeah, you have to keep studying. This is how you track it. So I think everyone played an important role. Well, that's really nice to give. I mean, you were not alone in it. Everybody was there. So yes, together definitely. you people achieved it. So yes. uh, my next question is for those of uh, the defense aspirants who are going to take their CDS examination, uh, you know, in the upcoming, not also the upcoming, yes, but mm -hmm. in their uh, near future. So how or what kind of suggestions you want to give to those uh, aspirants who want to take CDS exam? Uh, I would say... Uh... For the examination itself, uh, what is very important is, like I said, uh, to select your subject. Um, now, for women especially, I would say, because we have only two papers, we have GK and English. English should be your strong uh, hold because that will give you the maximum marks. And for uh, GK, uh, do a lot of revision. And although it's a lot to say, but then it's important to cover every subject. I would say, if not every subject, then at least uh, you can leave out one or two subjects, but cover most of the subjects because otherwise you won't make it to the merit. For um, men who are also giving a maths paper along with that, I would say uh, take the subject that you're good at and do it very well. And current affairs is a must because it has uh, quite a lot of weightage also. So do current affairs and do a set of subjects like if science, then do all the three subjects of science or arts. So do that and do that properly. Very valuable suggestions, Divya. Thank you for that. So I hope that those of you who are watching this uh, serious uh, aspirants, I must say, please use these uh, tips. This will be really, very helpful for you people. So now my next question to you, Divya, is about SSB. So how are you prepared for your very first SSB attempt? 
Um, actually, for my SSB, I had started preparing even before I gave my uh, written exam, in the sense that I had just bought a book and I got to know about the procedure. And then, um, uh, starting from the very first thing is the OIR. I bought a book for that, and I started uh, solving papers and doing it with the time limit. So that's very important in OIR. And then for my psychology, I uh, took help of, once you've seen some examples from a couple of books, you know what kind of story or sentence or reaction they want you to write. So after that, it's all about how much you practice, especially for VAT. So uh, after that, I took help of YouTube. I would uh, do practice sets every day. And that's how I build up on my psychology. And for my uh, GK, uh, for GD and lecturate and all that part, I uh, read the newspaper. So I started reading the newspaper after I cleared my exam. And then, uh, you know, you need to have an opinion or for a lecturate or for a GD. So for that, you need to read articles in the newspaper. So I read newspaper and that really helped me. I saw some uh, current affair, uh, certain topics that are uh, upcoming i saw videos for that so that's how i prepared for my gd and uh, of course uh, when the obstacles and all of that comes then i saw videos and i had an idea about how to use uh, that fatta bali thing and uh, you know uh, solve those obstacles so that's how i did okay so many of the candidates face a bit of difficulty in personal interview because that's mm -hmm. completely face to face individual uh, thing so uh, to, can you remember how your personal interview were and what kind of questions you faced so uh, my personal interview was uh, i would say it was a good interaction it was a happy interaction uh, and it went by really quickly i didn't it was for about 50 minutes and it i didn't realize how fast the time went by uh, he asked me, I was asked questions related to current affairs, uh, you know, certain what are the upcoming events that are happening, some defense acquisitions that are happening. Um, and then I was asked why you want to join the army. But something very surprising about my interview is that he, my interviewing officer, he didn't ask me a single question about RT or my sport. So I was very surprised. I was just waiting. When is he going to ask me? And I, you know, I'll tell him. But he knows, you know, they know better. They know that I know everything to everything about archery. So there's no point asking me about that. So he kept me engaged in things that I was not so, he felt that I'm not so comfortable with, like, you know, current affairs. And, um, uh, he, and then, of course, he asked me, why do you want to, just like you did, he asked me, if you are doing uh, so well in sports, then why do you want to join the army? So such questions were asked. There was a lot of probing uh, in the sense that uh, he would, any answer I would give, a lot of times he would ask me, oh, are you sure? Are you sure? Uh, repeatedly. So basically to check my confidence. So, of course, interview is like one of the most important things in the entire city process. But after giving my interview and after getting recommended, I realized it's really not about your knowledge. Uh, yes, you have to know, of course, if you're going to the army, you will, uh, without even putting an effort, you know a few things. And I think like that's more than enough. What's more important is how you handle a question whose answer you don't see. So that uh, I was able to do confidently uh, and I was calm. So I think that played a very important role. Okay, so I was going to ask the questions that whether he or she asked you about the archery, but you said yeah, yeah. that was really yeah, surprising even for yeah. me. So uh, my next question is about that only. How your brilliant achievements like World Championship, World Cup, Asia Cup have helped you getting recommended in SSP? Uh, you know, be not just for me, I think any sports person. Uh, the fact that we uh, are continuously participating in tournaments, we are preparing so that that uh, habit of planning systematically, how to go about uh, to achieve a goal, and then setting up a challenge for yourself. I, I feel like not just in sports, even if you are stepping into that SSB, it's like you are taking up a challenge. So that's in, in itself a very big thing. And that practice of overcoming challenges, challenging yourself and performing your best. I think that habit really helps to... Um, perform well in everything that you do. 
and of course uh, the fact that uh, in sports there's so much of pressure and especially in a sport like archery it's a mental sport you know uh, handling pressure shooting a right arrow at the right time shooting in the tent so that uh, pressure being able to handle that pressure it if you in the habit of that then you are able to do that in any situation so these experiences uh, really helped me perform well in ssp as well brilliant so i was uh, just thinking that how you could have you know aim at a certain point and hit it so you did just like that in the ssb itself right so it was a bull's eye and you hit it at the very first attempt uh, so my next question is for those of the aspirants again who are preparing for their upcoming ssb interview uh, do you want to give them certain important tips that they should adopt so that they can also get recommended like you in their ssb um i feel that uh in the ssb process the psychology part is something that really in your hands as such you really i mean it's, i think it's hard to tell how many marks you're going to get in ssb so uh, psychology i think is one thing that in your hands where you can really perform your best so practicing psychology every day is very important especially word association test because that's uh, when you are in your ssb then you want to write the best sentence you can but the time is still the same you still get just 10 seconds so you don't want to miss out on anything so practicing that every day is really important and i would say the other than just the written part the group tasks that happen and the interviews it's about speaking right you have to know how to speak confident so speaking in front of the mirror what i would do is i would uh, just take a topic and give myself maybe 30 seconds to think about it and i would just speak uh, i wouldn't even set a time limit just speak a lot uh, take a story uh, don't bother writing out what the story is just give yourself 30 seconds to or uh, think what the story will be and then narrate the story so speaking a lot really helps because in the interview you are anxious but if you've practiced speaking enough then it's when you will still speak well even if you're anxious so that's what i would say okay so now my question is about the screening itself because as you know if you are screened in you are there for the rest of the 4 yeah. to 5 days but if you're not you're going home so i want to ask you it was a very first ssb attempt you have never gone to any ssb before this yes. so how you prepared for the screening part uh for the screening the uh, firstly firstly the oir now uh, i knew that my calculation speed is a bit slow so i practiced uh, with the timing a lot that's very important and even when i went there i would uh, when i went for the ssb the oir i didn't waste my time solving every question I, because every question carries one point i you just do whatever questions you know first and then you go back to the ones you don't know uh, or those will which will take time so that's how i did my oir and then story it's about imagination if you keep your mind open then you will write a story that is relevant to the picture and that's very important because everyone uh, at the end of the day comes up with a good story but what is important is that your story should be relevant to what is shown in the picture so that i practice stories of course and then i would say the most important part in screening is the narration because in the gd people will cut you off but that narration part is the only time you have to really show that you can speak well so uh, especially the first 10 seconds in that narration you have to like, really speak confidently so that you you know grab the attention of the uh, assessors so narration is what i practiced a lot confidently uh, even if i i didn't give myself time to remember a story also try not remembering a story just speaking so put yourself in every situation possible and that's how i prepared it and of course gd you have to participate nobody will give you a chance to speak but you still have to try so that's how i prepare so in the screening specifically in the pptt part in which part like as you can understand three parts right story yeah. writing narration and gd which part you felt a bit you know difficulty um i felt that the gd initially was very chaotic i was somehow have some of my friends told me oh you're a first timer it's going to be very easy but uh, the thing is that everybody just wants to speak and there's some people who 
come with the uh, intention that even if I don't have anything to speak, I just have to keep speaking. So they'll just say, oh, I agree, I agree. And that's a lot of noise. So initially I started speaking, but there was so much of noise that there was nobody who was letting me speak. Like anybody, you couldn't hear anybody. So that is uh, natural. I realized that. Uh, then our group was divided. And then I I got a chance to speak. I spoke two, three times. And among that, I didn't speak too much. I was I didn't speak four or five times. I spoke about three times. And in that, I was two times I was heard properly. And I said a long line. And it was whatever I said, <laughs> it was, you know, quite logical. So I think that was a bit challenging at first. But then I got a hang of it. Okay, okay. So that was really nice. As a first timer, you did really well, I would say. And uh, the thing is that you, you, if you're speaking a lot, people will get irritated and disturbed. And I think speaking two to three times, but valid points, that's what they want, hmm. which you did, of course. So my next question is, in your journey, who was your biggest strength and support? Uh, I think like my family was a big support to me. My father is definitely my inspiration, but my mom and I, uh, we worked really, we worked hard together for my SSP. So my mom, she would take my interview every day. And she would uh, also, I mean, of course, I would go and narrate a story to her. So my mom was with me all the time. And I think that was a very big support. Okay. I now personally think that, uh, you know, uh, giving your interview to the interviewing officer is better than giving interview to your mother. Because she needs, she will grill you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really, really good practice on your side, I would say. Good practice for you. Okay, so, uh, Divya, my next question is, um, tell us something about your daily routine and how you were able to follow up and achieve the goal through following the daily routine. Um, so initially for my written exam, I was not specifically leaving any time for my SSP preparation. And I also, I'm into sports, so I have my tournaments and all coming up. And I'm also in college, so I had my college studies also. So my day went about like I would start, uh, I would get up in the morning, go for a run, uh, go to the gym. Then I would come back and I would go for my archery training. And after that, my entire morning session in the sense that up till my practice uh, and then I would come back and study my college uh, uh, lectures whatever were happening uh, after that in the evening I would go again for practice and the remaining time after my evening practice up till dinner uh, about four to five hours uh, in a day I would prepare for CDS the exam so that's how I uh, prepared for CDS that was my routine during CDS preparation and then when I got my call letter uh, and uh, my exam got cleared I started preparing for SSP. So normally I would just um, work on uh, reading my newspaper every morning. Uh, and of course my gym never stops. So that is a thing that happens that takes away two hours of my morning routine. So that, uh, and then in the evenings I would uh, practice my psychology uh, test. I would practice OIR and uh, I would uh, read some, I would see some videos, uh, practice speaking in front of the mirror. So my entire day went about like that. Okay. So my next question is about your hobbies. What are your hobbies and how hobbies helped you in getting recommended in SSB? Like, did they help really? Uh, well, you know, I, I like doing gym. So, and I also like running a lot. So that fitness, uh, not just for SSB, I think for everything being fit really helps you. So that helped me. And other than that, I like traveling because of my sport. I have to travel every two months, one month, somewhere. So I think meeting new people gets you in the habit of talking and uh, uh, gets you in the habit of uh, being in situations that are new. And more or less indirectly, that really helps you build your personality. So I would say it did help me in my SSPS. Okay, so my next question is also more or less similar like the hobby question. My next question is about how your participation in international sports and tournaments helped you in your SSB preparation as well. Uh, well, that's the thing, you know, the uh, habit of uh, being in a routine, being uh, participating in tournaments, firstly, the exposure, it uh, turns your personality into a very open one. 
and because i was participating in tournaments uh, and when i would win a medal then i would have interviews and i was used to that so in my interview also i was not very uh, anxious because i have given interviews before so that was fine i was okay with that uh but it was my first job interview but still the interview being uh, interviewed is feels the same um but other than that i think uh, the discipline of being in sports that really helps you build your routine when you're preparing for something like ssc so that's how it helps okay so you're basically a sports celebrity so do you think that being a celebrity that has really helped you in your getting recommended or is there anyone who can do it anyone can do it i'm telling you it's just it's that i have seen international players even in my batch there was an international player uh, she was great but uh, unfortunately she couldn't get recommended there were people who were simply uh, doing graduation they got recommended so it's not about how much of a uh, achiever you are it's about if you've really achieved then it will show in your personality and that's what matters they look at your personality so i don't think it's anything that you have to be a celebrity to get recommended that's not true at all anybody can get it okay so my next question is about the ssb venue as you went for the ssb bhopal uh, tell us something about your experience there and tell us if the, if you have any tips for those who are going to ssb bhopal for their ssb um uh, so bhopal it's, it's a very good center it's it, actually it's huge and the building in which we have our interview and our psychology it's a very it looks um, very british time and it looks very it looks like a palace you really enjoy it there uh, i really enjoy it i i think the food was great the accommodation was good my friends were good and the staff uh, that are there they are very helpful so i don't think there should be any problem for anybody who goes to uh, bhopal i think all ssb centers as such are uh, more or less the same and uh, i think the tip i would give is have fun enjoy the place there is a basketball court and there is a um, tennis court so play the sports and enjoy have fun okay so my next question is about your groups as you just now said that i had a friends i had a lot of friends over there so uh, what do you think that the, your group helped you also in your recommendation and what kind of group bonding you had with your own group there i think the group plays a very important part Uh, in our uh, recommendation and more than recommendation i would say screening because my group in screening we were really cooperative and uh, because i was a first timer i was paired with first timers and for all of us it was quite new so the fact that we were cooperative with an- one another you know we came up with a story really quickly we came to a conclusion very quickly it just maybe 3 to 4 minutes into the discussion and we had already come up with the story so a lot of people from my group got screened in about five of us got screened so and even in my uh, after i got screened in the group that i had uh, we were all first timers it was new and we were very cooperative and eventually when we did the tasks together we uh, there was a lot of understanding between us people were not interrupting that much uh, we were giving each other a chance and we were able to finish our uh, fgd much before the time also so our gto is very happy with us so i think the group does play an important part and apart from all that they also keep you motivated they also give you tips so that's i think it's a, a really helpful thing if you have a good group i think the group bonding uh, gets to show itself more in group tasks right yes, i mean does. how much you yes, have yes. the bonding with your group that's yes. really visible Yes. Okay so my next question is about which task you think you have performed the best in SSP and which task you were not able to give your very best Um the best task I I would say I was able to do well in all tasks especially in terms of what I had expected I was able to do that much or even better in every task whether it's the interview all the group tasks and I was happy with my psychology also I was able to you know do all my vats and uh, I did fifty-seven SRT, so but that that was fine for me, and uh, I was able to make good stories. So I was happy with all of my performance there. Uh, about what I was, what uh, the task that didn't uh, go so well. I mean, I think that all tasks went well, but initially when we had our PGT, because 
we were all first timers and seeing it on a uh, youtube video is different but when you are actually doing it you need to uh, really get your ideas working and we were just talking and talking talking <laughs> for 10 minutes we didn't cross the first obstacle and our group testing officer he was not happy with us initially later on we did well so i think that was one thing that starting made was not very it didn't go very smooth okay right so that was a bit you know sad for you people you thought you people were feeling a bit nervous like no, how we can start that, and all right no no if we were so involved everybody was giving their own opinion oh no we should do this oh we should do this and they were not really doing anything you know we were just talking no this won't work oh this will work it was like that <laughs> okay so execution part was a bit less yeah yeah okay so uh, yeah so my next question is who's your role model um role model you know i take inspiration from a lot of people it doesn't have to be a very you know famous person my friends uh, my family my teammates whoever i have i think there's something in them i can always learn from so i look up to anybody or anywhere i can find inspiration okay that's really nice so uh, how ssb crack exams helped you in your preparation and if you want to recommend ssb crack exams to any defense aspirant how much you will recommend this to them uh well like i said that as much as it sounds surprising i didn't read the newspaper uh for my current affairs and i did i i think i was able to get most of the current affairs that were there there are there's obviously some that are there in the paper that you will not see so you can't do anything about that but ssb crack uh, the daily current affairs videos of zaheer sir i used to watch that and it really helped me i was able to just you know at the there were these monthly compilations i would just write down the uh, notes and i would prepare it the day before my exam so that my current affair part really i would give all the credit to uh, your uh, ssb your uh, current affair videos uh so i would say that definitely uh if you because there are some things in the newspaper i feel that are not covered and i was not very satisfied with that i wanted that if i'm spending one hour in the day then i should be able to cover all the current affairs so i would suggest for any aspirant that definitely uh uh the guidance that you get uh, is from experts who have gone through the entire uh, syllabus and process and they will be able to save your time so that's a good okay so my last question is you're going to join the academy now so what are your plans that you want to achieve before joining the academy oh well before joining uh, like everybody you know i've been suggested by everybody that you must be fit you must uh, stay in the best of your health so my gym is going on and i'm uh, taking care of my fitness but i think before i join i just want to chill a little bit <laughs> so i'm just relaxing doing gym every day that's all okay thank you so much divya for your precious time and as i have said you have taken a bit of your precious time out for us and has shared such a beautiful experience that you had and you are ai year to rank holder as i said and you are like you have re- getting recommended you got recommended in your very first ssb attempt so that's really surprising thing we are very happy to have you here with us and we wish you all the best for your upcoming bright future i hope that you don that uniform that you have been seeing from the very childhood also on your father you see that uniform now on yourself so thank you a lot uh, divya for joining with us today thank we you. again hope a very good uh, future for your upcoming you know career thank you thank so you much. ma'am thank you